Hi, I am in the chair today. It is my turn. Well, let's talk games, episode 29. Uh, I can't believe we're almost at 30 already. It's pretty crazy. Uh, to your left, you have Dan. And to your right, you have Jamie. How are you, gentlemen? I'm listening to a click. Thank you, sir. You what? I'm listening to a click. When I whack the click. brightness up on the um, thingy, what do they call them? RGB light. It does like this little clicking noise. Oh. First cool. world problems. But yeah, other than that, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Cool. And, and I'm Michael Chan, as always. Uh, everybody should know that by now. And uh, today, we're just going to go have a bit of a general discussion and fluffy talk today. There's a big news happened um, that I think everybody's quite across with. But today, we'll just start off by discussing the usual. What have we been playing? Dan, I'll shift the focus to you to start with. All right. Well, still NBA Finals time, so you know what that means. 2K, 2K baby. <laughs> uh, there's, yeah, so I played more 2K. Nothing exciting happening there. Um, started. Tell me why I definitely was not in the right space to start that game. Uh, starts off very slow, and um, I do like the song that is played at the beginning, though, to kind of set that mood. I was like, oh, this is this is cool. They've really got this uh, <laughs> this angsty uh, situation down with these games. Um, but apart from that, not much this week. Uh, Mafia didn't arrive yesterday, so it might arrive over the weekend. But apart from that, I'm I'm done. Right. Tell me why, Jamie. What have you been doing? I'm listening to you sing the Backstreet Boys, mate. <laughs> That's all I've done all week. Um, no, I've played uh some more Super Mario. Did we talk about Mario last week? We did, didn't we? Because we were both playing it yep. when we recorded. Yep. Um, man, have those controls really not aged well across all three games? Like, really not aged well. Um, I played a little bit more Destiny, mainly just because I was fucking about with my screen. Going, this HDR doesn't look like it works properly. Destiny is a really good game to test HDR with. Um, didn't do anything of consequence in it. Um, we, I got that Ring Fit thing with the Switch. Oh, awesome. It took a few days to actually get round to to play in it, but it's basically like Pokemon had a had a baby with the Wii Fit board, um, and fuck, is it a workout? Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Jesus, I mean, we we turn the intensity up like to the most intense. Very like we're not starting with any pissy. Like a five year old could do this. Like dial it right up. Um, my knees were really, really completely fucked after about half an hour. <laughs> like, you, man, you, man, you, 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 had. To, you need to do some more <laughs> of this. Um, so yeah, I'm keen, keen to play some more of that too. Um, what else have I played? I don't think there's anything else that's really piqued my interest. A bit more Legend of Zelda. I'm going back through the, um, the DLCs that I bought and never played. Um... One of the Champions Ballad things has you go around, but Dan, I was telling you about this yesterday when we were talking about Demon Souls. It's like a one-hit kill thing. You get a trident that you mm. can one-hit kill with every, like anything you walk up to, one hit. Um, the consequence of that is you can be one-hit by absolutely anything. Um, so mm. it makes it quite fun. But that's it for me. That's what I've done in video games this week. What about you? Nice. Me, I have been uh, delving a lot into that discovery of recent of Xbox console streaming. The new feature on the um, Xbox beta app. My God, that's changed my life. <laughs> I've just been doing nothing but like trying to put it through its paces. Like, how how well does it work on my Wi-Fi? How well does it work on my 4G? How well does it work when I'm in a parking lot, you know, outside of somewhere I just had lunch, you know, <laughs> and streaming from my console? And it's it's amazing. It works a lot better than I thought it would. Like, it does hard crash on my phone a couple times, but it is a beta app. Um, and I think just the kind of phone I have, I don't know what's going on. It's a Samsung S10 Edge or whatever it is. And uh, I think some of the Edge features might be uh, screwing it up a bit. But regardless, uh, when it works, it's fantastic. So very much looking forward to getting that Razer Kishi controller for it. Um, I had to double check my Amazon order. There's two that you can get. There's just the basic edition, and then there's the Xbox edition. <laughs> so, uh, luckily, I uh, I did buy the correct one, which is the proper Xbox branded one with all the right the right buttons and everything. So, 
me, I had to have that. You know, I can't make do with just the basic one. But I, I'm loving that thing, man. It's so responsive. I, I, it shouldn't be working as good as that is. But, um, but otherwise, it's a that's really it. Just putting it through Gears Five and Forza Horizon Three and DC Universe Online and playing fighting games on it like Power Rangers just to see how the response time is. And yeah, uh, yep. Yeah. Totally into it. But the, um, only, the only game I played on there this week was I, I booted up um, the Elder Scrolls Online just to see how that felt portable. And I was like, was this sixty frames a second on console all the time? Because it it's it's sixty on XCloud. It must have been like um and I had that on my tablet, so I was like nice, you like twelve point nine inches and I was like, This is this is probably how this is meant to be done. Like Xbox controller, tablet, laid in bed, just running around wherever the fuck I was in Morrowind somewhere. Um, but that's the only thing I tested out on it. It wasn't for very long, if I'm if I'm being perfectly honest. I've toyed with the idea of that Kishi myself, but I think it plays better on the tablet. So if I'm using the tablet, I obviously won't be able to connect the Kishi to it. So yeah. I mean, for the phone, 100%. Right. It would make it way more. It basically turns it into a Switch, right? Yeah, it's awesome. It's what I've always wanted, just like a proper portable option for Xbox. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll get it sometime in uh, October when it finally arrives. But um, in the meantime... I'll wait I just... the unboxing video. <laughs> yeah, I'll be all over <laughs> it, mate. Like, but even with the basic Bluetooth Xbox controller, like, there's no latency that I'm noticing, you know? Uh, it, I can't, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just beside myself with it. But just the fact that, like, when Cyberpunk comes out, I'll be able to play it in bed, you know, or Valhalla, I'll just, you know, if I want to get off out of the lounge room and just lie down and just uh, play play it in my hands for a while and um, the game, that is. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> very much looking forward to it. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, enough of that. <laughs> Dan, did, Dan, did you um, get around to testing it on your TV? See if it works on the Android TV. Uh, which one was that? The Game Pass. No, the X Cloud no. stuff. No. I don't know. Can you, can you even get the um, Xbox beta app on the or Game Pass on TV, smart TVs yet? I don't think so. If you've well, got an the Android only, device. The only reason I'm thinking it might is because Sony TVs all run off Android operating systems, whereas yeah. like LG, Samsung, they all have their own. Um, so like most of the time, like I, like especially with streaming services, um, they always they always will go to Sony TVs first because if it's working on Android, they it pretty much works on the TV. So that's why I'm wondering with a lot of this stuff whether it would be there because it's got the Google Play Store and everything. So if it's got the Google Play Store, it should 100 percent be there because it's on the Play Store. Mm. Yeah. yeah, well that'd be awesome. Far out. What a what a. Um... What a, I can't even think of the word I'm looking for. That's like, awesome, anyway. If that works, you don't ever need to really own an Xbox to plug into the TV. You just use nah. that streaming service and connect your PlayStation yeah. controller. Correct. Like, all you needed was the Xbox ecosystem, which leads directly into <laughs> what we're about to talk about. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> so, up. man, big big news. Yeah, teed it up. Thank you very much. Uh, Bethesda, you know, all those games that everybody likes, all those big titles, like out you know if you just get away from the, the bugs for a while uh elder scrolls and you know rage and doom and dishonored and blah 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 like just keep going everybody knows what they do um crazy crazy stuff like microsoft now owns them <laughs> or at least they intend to purchase which is the you know the technical term that they're throwing around at the moment but yeah it's it's a done deal all the press releases are out there they're falling into the xbox game studios banner which is just Nobody saw that coming. I never in my wildest dreams or thoughts would have imagined that someone would purchase Bethesda and Zenimax. Like, just never was a thing. It was always like all these other little studios that you would think about. Oh, what's the next one that Microsoft's going to acquire? You know, which we'll talk about later. But initially, it was just like, how did they keep this a secret? When everything about the Series X and the S was leaked, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and this is, you know, arguably bigger. Uh, really like when you think about it it's not just a new console but this is like purchasing a whole sector of the gaming industry basically um so yeah look my, my initial thoughts on it before we actually get into it was 
um this just answers the whole question of like microsoft doesn't have games or xbox doesn't have games which you know i would um protest but uh because i like a lot of them but i know from an optics perspective from other points of view that yeah what other kind of exclusive stuff have they been putting out recently that um, makes you want to buy an xbox and yeah granted <clears throat> there might not be enough to go around for some but now that argument's just way off like off the table just now yeah, forget about it um the part of the discussion about this bethesda purchase is the exclusivity uh and answering that question of xbox first party problems um i think we'll start the conversation off by just initially uh your gauge on this purchase and how do you think it'll affect you like i know jamie like you're you're across basically everything like you've got every kind of ecosystem sorted <clears throat> dan i know you kind of focused on playstation like i am like just xbox basically for the most part so this will affect us all differently potentially on what's going to happen so jamie i'll point it towards you first just because you've got the widespread uh options so this prospect of having potentially bethesda titles going future in the future titles at least the ones that aren't already promised to multiple platforms um how do you think this is going to affect the overall industry or the the everyday gamer going forward i think you've got people in one of one or two camps right you're gonna have the people um like you guys who are very one console centric for 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 the most part um and the xbox side of that camp are going to be super happy <laughs> they're going to be very um you know this is this is amazing we've uh, microsoft have essentially just bought their biggest exclusive do you know what i mean uh, there's no world in which halo is bigger at the moment in its current form than the elder scrolls or fallout for that matter they're both bigger ip than halo for sure um so you think you know if you're xbox affiliated you go this is going to be great it's going to integrate well with everything xbox everything microsoft there's probably going to be some help do you know what i mean microsoft are probably going to give bethesda some help on some uh, the engine hopefully um to, to iron out some of the shite um if you're on the other side of that um group of people and you're affiliated with sony i think you're going to be very disappointed um from the video that you shared with us just before we started um phil spencer was very look we've no plans to go everything that we've just bought is going to other platforms we'll take it on a case-by-case -case basis and how they how they do that with something like elder scrolls or fallout i actually am in the camp that think i think they'll keep it i think those are the ones that will be completely xbox or pc affiliated and um the smaller titles the well smaller the smaller ip so you look at this death loop thing that's going to playstation first anyway um titles of that nature or you know new test the water type stuff might come to xbox first and if it performs mediocrely and they don't really you know get much excitement or buzz out of it then yeah that can go to playstation and switch if possible in three months six months um, and then if you're in the other pool of people that plays everywhere, um, like myself, very ag platform agnostic, I play where the best version is. Um, and for the most part with Bethesda stuff, that's usually PC. Um, although console for Bethesda things these days is just as good. Um, I mean, the last thing I played on PC at Bethesda's was uh, Fallout 76. And compared to when I first played that, when it first came out on Xbox, it was markedly better um just the experience as a whole so i think if you're in that if, if you're me it changes nothing um other than meaning that xbox are going to get a ton of exclusives so i think yeah the real winner the only winners here are, are microsoft and xbox it, there's no 100%. other way of, of, of tying the bow on that yeah no, 100 i agree um I'll, I'll give my thoughts on it after we throw it to dan so dan your perspective on potentially a world where you don't play elder scrolls and fallout games anymore on a playstation like how do you feel about that well so i have this weird strange relationship with bethesda games because i always have liked what they've done but every time i pick up one i just c can never get into it so like when i got back like i tried fallout 3 back in the day and skyrim back in the day uh 
uh, games which I just couldn't keep going with. I played like a couple of hours and I'm like, this is not my type of game. I don't know if it was the perspective or, uh, the, or how the gameplay was because I didn't find it as interesting. But then I can play a game like Doom and Doom, I thought like this plays awesome. Um, but once again, I ran into this thing with Doom that after about two hours, I'm like, all right, this is really intense. I need to stop now. Um, <laughs> and, be- and because there's not um, that much story in Doom, um, there was nothing also there for me to keep me interested um, in my PlayStation 4 uh, exclusives video. I, I basically talk about how there are games where I can play a game and it can have really good gameplay, um, but it'll always only bring me to a certain point. Um, story is normally the thing that makes it worthwhile or like an elite game or something for me. So Doom, I'm, like, I'm playing this. I'm like, this is awesome. The way that you're going in when the more aggressive you are, the more likely you are to stay alive type gameplay. So I've always appreciated Bethesda stuff, but I just can barely ever get into their games. So this is this really weird thing where Microsoft come out, they bought Bethesda, and I'm like, I'm like, wow, I, I'm not going to, like, I'll be able to play Bethesda games like on the PC if I want, but I'm like, well, how often do I play Bethesda games? So it didn't really impact me that much. Um, but that being said, it was just huge news this week. This is this is one of the biggest stories we've ever ever had. And in terms of the exclusive side of things, I I do think yeah, it, I think. I think sometimes people try to make things more complicated than <laughs> they really are. And I do think it is going to be that scenario of um, Starfield, Elder Scrolls, and Fallout will come to other consoles um, like PlayStation. But everything else will probably just be exclusive. The only reason I'm saying that is that this this – Sale was seven point five billion dollars, and um, if you're a Microsoft shareholder, I'm assuming you want to you want to know that your money is going to come back in from that t- sale. And I don't think games like even like Deathloop or Ghostwire Tokyo, which um, Microsoft have just as many exclusives on PlayStation as PlayStation do now. Um, like games like that don't really move the needle as much. Um, but if you can, if you release Elder Scrolls and Starfield and Fallout, mind you, the same, it's the same team that makes the Elder Scrolls games as they do Fallout. So after this next Elder Scrolls game comes out, they'll start working on another Fallout. They'll, um, I think that's the way that they will go and just leave all the other smaller stuff. So that the next Wolfenstein and uh, when they do a next doom, if they do another rage, uh, they'll all just go to game pass and people will say, well, why wouldn't you just have uh, Starfield and Elder Scrolls as exclusives? The thing is, even if, even if they do come to PlayStation, Xbox still have, the advantage of saying, well, okay, we're look, we're being the good guys. We're releasing it on PlayStation for you, but it will be sev- like, so it's going to be 70 bucks on PlayStation. Whereas you can still say, or you can come over and play on PC or the series X or the series S and you get game pass and it's $15 a month. So you still, you still get this game for fifteen dollars compared to seventy. So even if it, they don't make those an exclusive, you're still getting an advantage by playing it on um, Xbox. But now it was, it was just a huge, huge story this week. Huge, massive, yeah, huge. Huge is uh, an understatement. But to to um, not to throw a spanner into the uh, mode of thinking that you're having there, like I think the return that they're going to have if they put those games out on PlayStation is going to be significantly smaller than what you'll find with the investment in Game Pass. Like, um, to use one of Phil Spencer's words that he's been using a lot in interviews uh, is yeah. bullish. That's the word that he wants to use. And I think yeah. um, this is an investment. 
in Game Pass to throw all these major titles on directly onto Game Pass and uh, Xbox First Studios. Like, to throw a stat at you, Dan, uh, to take a page out of your own book. Oh, no, um, not the stats. <laughs> the um, Q1 revenue of this year for Microsoft um, in this particular, like, surface of uh like gaming division like Microsoft service and xbox q1 was like 10 billion um so that's just that division in return for one quarter so this acquisition is small fry from microsoft like i don't think they're going to be too concerned with how much trickle effect of money that they're going to get from playstation uh, I, I think and such Sat- Nadella, the microsoft the big man at the top is even saying, look, you know, we're not done. Like, we're, there's more acquisitions to be made. And um, Phil Spencer himself was saying this is a, an investment in Xbox and the player. So for all of that news, I don't think they're too concerned at all with putting it out on PlayStation. And, and that interview that I, sh- I shared this morning, basically, I think just just um, puts a nail on that. Of like They're investing in the eco- ecosystem of Xbox and they want Xbox eco- ecosystem to be the best place to play, all that kind of stuff. So... That now means Xbox consoles, PC, and mobile phones, like everything but PlayStation and Nintendo, basically, at the moment. So they've got, like, the whole spread happening here. Like, I was talking to a mate of mine on stream last night, and he was thinking about... He missed out on getting an Xbox, uh, but he's more of a PlayStation guy. And I was like, man, why don't you just... um, You've got a mobile phone. Uh, He doesn't really have a gaming PC that can run anything, so... So you got a mobile phone. Why don't you just um, Game Pass releases out here for streaming uh, in Australia, the quarter, uh, first quarter of uh, 2021, and um, you know you could essentially just get Game Pass on your mobile phone, and you'll have all the Xbox first party stuff, you know. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, you know. And it's no cost to him. It's so that small thing already of like well that just opens up the whole door to everything and the fact that you're gonna get doom first of october doom eternal like it's a relatively new game and that's like the first kind of play of this new deal that's happening already where just drop a big title of that on game pass like it's no thing <laughs> you know and i i've been avoiding buying it yet because I, I bought the first doom uh, on sale for like 10 bucks because i was just hanging off on it and now i just get it with my game pass so they want people to be investing in the Game Pass subscription where, you know, you get 30, 20, 30 million people, whatever, on the, the platform where it's already got 15 million people. And if they're all paying for Ultimate, let's just, like, make it at the top level. 20, 30 million people, 15 bucks a month, you know? That's easily... You're going to be wrapping up to, like, a billion or plus a year, you know, just on subscriptions. So the 10, 20 bucks, whatever it is, off every PlayStation purchase um pales in comparison when you look at it like that so i think that's why like you'll find like elder scrolls and starfield and all the big stuff coming out in the future it i i really would bet against it coming out on other consoles as they keep saying um which is huge like you've you've just said it like it's huge it's big news and the fact that we're going to live in a world where it's like the original Xbox all over again, where Morrowind was ported over to the original Xbox. But that was because no other console at the time could play it and it barely ran on the original Xbox. But that's how far back that this relationship with Bethesda and Microsoft goes. And um, like Todd Howard said in an interview with Pete Hines and Phil Spencer and Larry Herb, like it just makes sense. Like it feels right. Like when they brought the news to their staff saying like we're now... Uh, we've been bought or whatever and people were like oh god like what does this mean for us and when they let the news um pass to them saying well it's xbox like we'll be with xbox and they're all like oh yeah that makes sense so like all this there's a lot of in- interviews that you can see over the last week with um you know the the executives from bethesda and microsoft uh that it just seems to be like they've got this tight kind of relationship happening and i really don't see it coming across to other platforms but um doom is just the fact that that's now <laughs> an xbox title like i want a, a master chief dlc and doom eternal <laughs> you know like or a skin that you can swap out or something so you can run around as a doom slayer but with a master chief armor or something you know just these kind of concepts it's just fun to play with um but i yeah just the fact that i can wake up one day and open up my phone flip over my xbox 
and uh, I can start playing like um, what Starfield on my mobile phone in bed one day, you know, or the next Doom game. Like it's just one of the biggest things that I, I um, nobody saw coming. But uh, I, I don't know how PlayStation can retort to this. Like I think you shared Dan a, a couple of weeks ago about the um, the difference, like the disparity between like the earnings of uh, Microsoft and it's like ten percent or whatever of Sony's like full annual earning or whatever. I can't remember the stat that you posted, but it was like so just wide. It's like how does Sony come back to this? Like the argument I'll throw back to you is um the whole insomniac acquisition. Like Spider Man, I've always said, is something that should be enjoyed by everybody. So you see this argument online now about all these people that are on PlayStation are like, well, you know, these games are bigger than Xbox. They should be on everything. <laughs> you know, that bullshit argument of like, well, you're going to have to suck it up, buddy. So it's the same thing where I go, well, what about Spider Man? Spider Man transcends, like, he's been on every game, every game console. Everyone's been able to enjoy him on every format, you know, but now he's limited to this one console. But people seem to be okay with that, or at least the PlayStation people were okay with that. Me as someone, I enjoy Spider Man and I, now don't have access to it because I don't want to invest in um, PlayStation as much. Uh, God, it took me this long to, bl- to play the PS4 one uh, th- until this year. So, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, all right, I'll just have to live with that decision. But now the tables have turned. We've got all these big IPs now going to be sitting with one console and you've got the other team going, this is bullshit. Rah, rah, rah. Like, I just, this whole back and forth argument, like, well, if Spider-Man can be... Uh, restricted why can't all these other ones you know it's a bit very interesting conversations that um, have been happening online some of them are just mundane and and everything like that but um yeah I, I, I don't know there's a lot to kind of process here and thinking about what this means for future but i think um this case by case basis that phil's been saying lately is it's just a nice way of saying no <laughs> you know no that we've got we've got this like it's I, I kind of push back on that only because the way that the way that this is a, a, a weird purchase in the fact that the way that they're talking is that Bethesda, even though they will be owned by Microsoft, they're still treating it as though they're working as like a semi-independent, um, like all the people they're in the industry better. that they who they contacted Bethesda after the fact, and and like all the people that they deal with, like PR reps, and we're, and they're basically saying we're staying exactly the same. Whereas normally in a, in a purchase like this, all of your your PR, your your HR, uh, your mark marketing, and all that stuff is normally taken over. But so like when Insomniac was taken over, so Sony would therefore take care of all that stuff for them, and they just have the game studios. Uh, whereas this sounds like they're leaving Bethesda to their own devices to still do everything that they're doing. And, but I believe like at, at the end of the day, it'll be like Bethesda, you do what you want to do. But like when, when it comes down to like a, a big final decision, Xbox be like, no, you're not doing that or, <laughs> or you're fine. But rather, but otherwise they're going to let them go. And it's just weird. Oh, like, right. I just looked at, and I just looked up like Fallout 4 stats, and I think it sold between the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, it was about 13 million copies or something. And the PlayStation 4 was like 8 million of those copies. And I just, just don't see with those bigger games, as I said, I'm only really talking about Fallout and Elder Scrolls. I, I think all the other ones normally probably sell 2 million. And you can get that money back through Game Pass subscriptions. I don't know if you can get 13 million copies of Fallout 4 coming back. Um, that is the only reason why I'm thinking that. But, yeah, it's only when I'm spe- specifically talking about those games. I think the next Doom, all those other smaller stuff. Um, it's really funny when, we talk, when we've always thought about what, what studios would they buy. Uh, we've always thought about, oh, well, they're 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 likely to go after like your your double A or your or your smaller indie studios because they kind of fit with the Game Pass model. And the fact is is like Bethesda is made up of all of those type of studios. Like Deathloop, Dishonored, uh, uh those type of games where you wanna sell like two million copies 
and you and they take like two years maybe three years at most to make like they're inexpensive if you're um, comparing them to like triple a games and it's like it's the perfect purchase for them because of all those it's it's all those studios well but, um, you, you, yeah, kind, of, you kind of already said it that um like bethesda are too big and you're right like, and that's why they're they're a publisher and um matt booty and phil spencer have always said when they acquire a new studio that they leave them alone until they need to step in basically and that's exactly what they're doing now and todd howard said even in the interview with larry herb and phil and pete hines of like well it's up to phil you know what happens basically like he, he said it in as many words um so you can't buy something that big and then upset the apple cart right <laughs> so you buy this whole publishing arm of like multiple studios to put under your own xbox banner why would you step in and try and upset that like obviously they're going to be trading assets and knowledge and software and todd's even said that um starfield's having a massive uh engine rewrite that jamie mentioned at the top so they're already starting this sharing of assets and uh equipment and knowledge and ability and all this kind of stuff so it's 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 more complicated than just we we buy you you do the thing um that just go do it or having a uh you know, the executives at the top stepping in they go we want you to do it like this now the smart thing to do is just to keep letting them do what they do rather than yeah i'm not saying you know, that effect. they're gonna i'm not saying they're getting involved in it i'm saying that the publishing arm of bethesda is not going away which is normally the things most most studios do not have they don't usually have a yeah. publishing arm and that's why they get bought by microsoft so they can do all that but it sounds like bethesda is going to be publishing their own game so it will still come up with published by bethesda even though it's owned by microsoft it's like it's like the example i gave during the week where when you go see a marvel movie it doesn't it doesn't have the big like disney castle like <laughs> flash screen <laughs> showing you oh we're owned by disney it kind yeah. of marvel is the is the thing even though disney still publish like that's how i'm seeing it in my head yeah yeah 100 percent. well you know we'll have to see what happens in the long yeah, run it'll it'll obviously time time. yeah exactly right i'm gonna lean on the side of it's all gonna be exclusives just as an xbox fanboy but we're just gonna say that <laughs> but um talking about throwing money around and throwing industry weight at the at the wind and see what happens Satya is like, yeah, we're not done yet. And I mentioned that before that they're going to buy more to invest in their platforms, and this is small change in the, in the run of things. But besides, besides um, Bethesda, um, I I think like Jamie put some images out on Twitter that just ran rampant and became a viral sensation of um, this whole rumor about Sega being acquired by Microsoft and the whole sonic it's out there the rumors are happening you can find the the mid, uh, matching of colors and the the new blue and the shock blue and white controller and you know the dude wearing a sonic shirt and an xbox press conference and you know you start connecting the dots and conspiracy theories but you know i think everybody's talked at length about that one i would personally prefer it if um xbox bought sega as well but um just as a fluffy topic was there any kind of uh, developer that you're a fan of or a studio that you like that you know, could do with a bit of a lift as far as finances go and support or power that you would like to see, like either on the Sony camp or you know, Xbox? Like who do you think could um, also fill out the Xbox games roster? Like they've got 23 studios now. What's, you know, why not add another one? <laughs> so, Jamie, I know like um, Dan and I kind of went to back and forth for quite a while. So I'll, I'll start with you. Was there anything in particular that you would like to see, like, you know, in the perfect world where you're like, oh, I've only got one console. I don't have everything. You know, was there one in particular that you'd be like, I'd really like to see that happen? In a perfect world, and if we're talking just about, yeah, just about Xbox, I mean, I've got one for each. I mean, Xbox is the one talking about an acquisition, but I, Sony will clap back. Like, that's just their nature. Um, I think for Microsoft what i'd like to see but what won't happen is i'd like them to see to see them buy atlas um this kind of because oh, yeah. sony uh, sorry sega publish a lot of their stuff but they don't own the ip um and that's just purely the persona fan in me talking but atlas also have a bunch of other games and properties a lot of them in the shin megami tensei kind of um world that i think would be awesome on xbox 
Um, I tossed around the idea of Platinum as well um, for similar reasons. The type of games that they build would suit Game Pass to a T, but um, no, I'll stay with Atlas. And then Sony, I mean, it just makes sense for them to buy Konami. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not the whole thing, the the publish, the the, the games um, of Konami, let them keep their pachinko machines and their arcades and all the rest of it. Um, but <laughs> yeah, buy, buy the IP for the games, so buy their games division. Um, and Dan obviously is a is a big fan of Metal Gear and um, you know th- that type of stuff. We'll probably be able to touch on that a little bit more. But you forget that they own Pro Evolution Soccer as well, and that especially in mm. Europe, that game carries a ton of weight. Um, like when I was growing up, you were either a FIFA kid or a PES kid, and you know the, the PES lost its way, but it's li- it's it's widely regarded as the better football game. Like it's a better game of football. So with the right people and the right money and the right backing, um, I know that Sony kind of seem to get the FIFA marketing deal. Every Xbox get it for a bit, and then PlayStation get it for a bit, and it, it kind of tosses and turns. So that'd be smart for them as well. Um, but yeah, I think that they'd be my two choices: Atlas to uh, to Xbox and and konami to sony but i'd imagine that's stealing uh stealing dan's because i think he would he'd probably say something similar for uh for sony but um i'll toss it to you anyway dan what's um what's on the shopping cart for these big boys well you've thir- uh, you've totally uh thrown me off, <laughs> off my set i didn't think of like uh, i should get some sony ones up here um just in case but um but I do have some Microsoft, and I have like five different Microsoft ones. So I don't know if Chunt, maybe you wanted to first in case I steal one of yours. Like, I don't oh, know how many you it. have. I, doesn't bother me if you take one of mine, man. Just go for it. All right. Well, um, I think one of the obvious ones, just because of what we what has come out recently, is Dote Nod. I think Dote Nod is uh, perfect up a studio so for people that don't know they made remember me back in the day they made life is strange one and two awesome adventures captain spirit vampire uh tell me why which just came out which was published by microsoft the other ones were published by other uh places and twin mirror is coming out soon as well um and that is one that they are self-publishing so i think particularly these last two games are kind of a test bed one how does tell me why go on game pass um and in terms of the deal, like how many people play compared to what what it costs to to make it, but also Twin Mirror, if if that game, I think that is a test bed to see if they can just continue on self publishing themselves and make enough from it, um, and then if that doesn't, then they might consider getting help from elsewhere. The other ones I had uh, was Avalanche Studios, who made Just Cause three and four, Mad Max, and they worked with id Software from bethesda on rage 2 uh i thought that that once again fits perfectly a game every two or three years come the game pass sorted and uh i'll leave one more the last one i had was remedy uh phil spencer talked about that you know part of the reason why they got bethesda was because of the relationships that they had built over so many years and that you know bethesda games because they're always mostly known for pc the Xbox connection was always there. The affinity was always there. And with Remedy, with Alan Wake, with Quantum Break, uh, and with Crossfire coming out soon, with a, well, that single-player um, portion of Crossfire coming out, um, I think that those, are, those would be my three candidates for Xbox. I'll pass it back to you, but I might look at some uh, Sony, Sony examples while you're talking. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, uh, I think Remedy was going to be one of my first ones off the bat, um, just for the same reasons that you mentioned. It's just, it seems like a no-brainer, but uh, given everything you just mentioned, and, and like, uh, what, what was that game that, I can't even remember what the game is, uh, Quantum Break or whatever it was? Yeah, like, yeah. I still have yet to play that, but it looks phenomenal, and I've heard good things from people that actually played it, give or take some parts of the game. Um, I think that just... That, that was a victim of 2013 Xbox, you know, uh, the whole live action t- TV-based stuff that they were going for. But um, I'm actually kind of in the park of 
I want to see what these 23 studios are going to do first, <laughs> you know? Um, like, it's all well and good, like, to be put my critical hat on. It's, it's all well and good to be like, we've got 23 studios now under the Xbox Game Studio banner. Yeah, look at us. But I want to start seeing what they do as a new thing, you know, and what games they're going to start bringing me because... You know, if they if they start putting stuff out, or I'll, it's like, well, I don't even need to think about anything else. Like, you just give me everything. That's that's great. But uh, we're not going to start seeing the fruits of this until a couple of years down the road, you know. So, um, but uh, you know, uh, if I really had to get in the woods with it, there's one studio that I've always wanted them to take, and they made two of my favorite games on the 360, which are uh, Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon, which is Mistwalker Studios which is a Japanese studio. So they um, they published those two games that were exclusive on 360. And they're Japanese-based. They did, uh, you know, JRPGs. And Phil Spencer's, a, you know, he's, he's wanting to get into the Japanese side of things and um, acquire a studio over there and uh, get more of the Japanese titles over to Xbox. And um, uh, side note, the, the uh, Xbox consoles, pre-orders and stuff, all sold out in Japan. <laughs> over the last couple of days, which is pretty awesome, and Korea and in India. So, like, their Asian market stuff seems to be picking up, which is good. Um, but there aren't really a lot of, besides the, the Warner Brothers thing, like, that, God, I'd love that. Just to pull in uh, Netherrealm is one of the ones I'm really looking at because they're the only guys that are doing the cinematic fighting game, you know? And, oh, I love that shit. Like, Injustice and Mortal Kombat, God damn it. No one else is doing that. So if they can, like, trade tech or trade knowledge for, like doing that with killer instinct under the whole xbox banner like god like sign me the hell up you know and get like a smash bros-esque microsoft game where all these characters under the microsoft banner <laughs> in a fighting game oh my god you know that, that'd just be spectacular so i mean the the uh options would be endless on that regard but um i mean rocksteady no-brainer netherrealm mist walker and maybe remedy like they're on the top for me like the, of what's left so to speak that i'd be interested in seeing but you know it's all a bit of fun but um i, I padded that out a bit there dan so did you have the extra sony ones that you wanted to mention <laughs> maybe you had time yeah, but, uh yeah apart from uh jamie's konami prediction um uh, i feel like a couple of these studios that sony have connections with i think they've kind of lost their chance so i think I think Quantic Dream have essentially lost that chance. Uh, Quantic Dream have already said that whatever their next game is going to be is going to go everywhere. Um, so they're they're moving on from their long-standing uh, commitment. I think Supermassive Games that made Until Dawn and that are making the the little anthology horror um, series. I think they recently signed a deal with uh, Na- Bandai Namco. I think to um, publish their games. So I think they oh, wow. have that. Um, connection so and those are in kind of that uh, uh, like choose your own adventure type realm yeah. uh, so the only things I can really think of is one uh, house mark uh, who you know I, I talk about them on my ps4 exclusive video where you know games like dead nation and Rezo gun and alien nation and next mark and you're in Matterfall um, were all just released on PlayStation 4 um and returnal which is the that game that was part of their june uh june showcase uh i think this is this is kind of the the big test bed to see you know can can this this studio that was made for making like little side scrollers and uh, twin stick shooters can they can they upgrade and make kind of a bigger bigger style game and so I think I think they're probably the most likely, as well as Blue Point, who obviously made the Uncharted uh, one, two, and three um, remasters. They made, and then the Shadow of Colossus, and and then the up upcoming uh, Demon Souls. So oh, I think those right, two yeah. are the are the main choices that you'd have to go with. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'd be interested to see what Sony comes back with, um, just to be a fly on the wall in that meeting room after all this has been going on. <laughs> just to be like, shit, you know, who, who can we acquire next? Um, yeah, that's a bit of fun. Like, 
imagine the world where some of those things happen. But um, I think we'll move on. Bet, actually, to... there was also a thing that came out that not only a couple of months ago, uh, Sony were in the room with Bethesda trying to get like timed exclusivity on games like Starfield <laughs> yeah. um, only a couple of months ago. So that's, uh, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Imagine that, like being in the room talking to Bethesda, and they and they've already like essentially had the major conversations with Microsoft. It's like talking to, uh, you know, talking to some chick when she knows very well that she's already been asked out by someone else. Yeah, she already has a date in two hours that you don't know yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is awkward. I'm, I'm currently already seeing someone. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're a nice guy, but oh man. But um, talk about nice guys and things. There's three of us here, and we've got Christmas coming up, and we have to think about the shopping lists that we're doing, not these big companies. We're bringing it back down to us, our own little shopping lists. So pre-orders, birthdays, Christmases, let's talk about um, what is left on our lists for this year. We're, we're reaching the end, and there's got to be some games that we haven't picked up yet for various reasons because there's just way too many to get through. Um, so... I have my wish list open, but Jamie, um, I'm going to start with you. Is there any games that you haven't gotten to this year or that you haven't bought? Or I, I don't, I don't have on? mine open. Um, I sent it to you guys, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. you're, throwing us, you're throwing us off bloody um, off our marks. Yep, 100%. You've got to stay on your toes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know where it is. I'm just scrolling back through all of the pictures we send each other and trying to find it dan have you got yours handy you can uh you can go first yeah mine's simple because i don't think mine's actually changed much from last time really so avengers have come out which jamie bought for me so thank thanks thanks santa thanks santa jamie you're welcome um, you can sit on my lap anytime <laughs> <laughs> nice um so i i literally pre-ordered uh mafia this week which will be coming out in a few days so that's that's part of my shopping list done and then uh i really don't think um you know i am tossing and turning because obviously there's been all these rumors about a mass effect trilogy being remastered and coming to like being announced in october and coming in october that is seriously enticing I miss those games. Delayed um, to next year. It was confirmed while you were asleep. Ah, why would you do that to me? Um, <laughs> okay, ignore that then. Um, okay, so yeah, basically I think it's st I still am sticking by my um, three-game rule when, when the next gen comes, which is, which is Spider-Man, 2K, and Cyberpunk. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going on a... I'm a, I have a, like a little principal thing where that I'm not going to really buy any Ubisoft game until it's 30 or 40 bucks or something. Uh, so Valhalla, while I'm interested in it, uh, I'll just get that next year at some time. But uh, yeah, I think my, my shopping list hasn't changed all that much because it hasn't been since we last did this. There wasn't too many news announcements really, that, um, especially, for this, especially for this year, this Christmas season. Hmm. Indeed. So I know the the games have so, kind of slowed down a little bit as far as like the big releases coming up to November. But uh, you know, next year, obviously, a lot of games have been held off to be released on the new systems as well. But um, I'll just carry on with my list. Um, so I've got some backups here that I've hovered over a number of times that never follow through with. Um, there's a little game called Stone. It's an Aussie-made game where you play as this stoner koala and it's like a um, point-and-click kind of adventure detective kind of game. It's very... Uh, it seems very interesting. <laughs> like, it's it's a short game um, and it's not very expensive. It's like 19 bucks or whatever. Um, and it's been on Steam and PlayStation and Switch and all that. But uh, I've hovered over it a number of times and I always just pick up something else, but it's something I want to get to. <laughs> Um, Dark Side is Genesis, of course. It's on Game Pass, so it's on my wish list still. Cyberpunk, yeah. The Ghostbusters video game, the remastered. That uh, I've been meaning to pick that up, but because um, it's just it's almost impossible to get a cheap copy on the 360 um, because it was like yeah, around that time it was pulled down from uh, 360 sales uh, 
digital stores and shit. Uh, but the remastered version is out there to pick up. Um, uh, oh, DC Supervillains. Uh, Lego DC Supervillains. Uh, it's been on my list for a while. It keeps coming off and on sales all the time, but it's always at a time where there's something else on sale that I want to get. But uh, I, I've, I need to get that. I want to pick that up. Um, Avengers, yeah, like I'll probably get it for the Xbox. I've mentioned that a few times eventually so I can play with my brother. But um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake. Uh, I want that a lot, very much so. And, very tempting. Uh, yeah, very, very. Like I want it, but I'm hanging off for a sale on it. Um, and just now, like all these games uh, in particular uh, with like Tony Hawk and Lego and Avengers, like the the prospect of being able to play that you know portably you know like the avengers now became more exciting knowing that i can grind in that game um without really thinking like it's just you know in my handheld while i'm watching something like if i want to do a couple of missions or try and get some stuff or whatever um that game just became immediately more ap- appealing like to, uh, just to be able to play it whenever i want as well as like the, the lego dc villains where i can just kind of casually play it uh, portably, so I'm, I'm like thinking about all these games differently now, uh, even to the point where I want to like put Skyrim back on my Xbox <laughs> just so I can play it like that. Like it's just opened up so many doors. Um, but yeah, obviously the, the big ones of Valhalla I've already paid for in Cyberpunk, but that, that's about it. That's my wish list um, that I've got lined up at the moment. Everything else is like Game Pass. Like I, I don't really have to worry about. All the first party stuff anymore oh gears tactics holy shit i can't forget that that's that's the other one so yeah that's me done I rounded off jamie have you got your shit yeah i found it found my list so i've i've separated mine by a platform which which was a smart thing to do holy shit. um so for the playstation 5 yeah both demon souls and miles morales in there for both of those um I'm weirdly actually looking forward to Demon Souls more than I am Spider Man now. After seeing more of it, it looks uh, very pretty. Uh, on the Xbox, I'll grab FIFA for this year for reasons I've mentioned before. I'm not playing it on PC anymore because the the rampant cheating is is ridiculous um, in the Ultimate Team mode. Uh, Phoenix Rising. So I chose this on Xbox basically because achievements and exactly what you just said, Chunt, about being able to sit on the couch and you know, just play it on the, my phone if I'm doing something else. So I don't have to be tethered to like my setup on my desk and things like that. Um, Kingdoms of Amalo Re-Reckoning, same. And with that, I'm waiting for a sale, which Black Friday, 100% going to have 10, 15, 20 pounds knocked off it, whatever it might be. Um, Call of Duty, Xbox. I always play Call of Duty on Xbox. Um, and Cyberpunk, I've got there as a maybe. I'm so torn between whether Xbox or PC for Cyberpunk because we haven't seen anything about frame rates or anything like that on Xbox. And if it's capped at 30, then I'm absolutely playing it on PC um, <laughs> because I want that ray tracing and I want some 60 frames a second. Um, so yeah, on to PC, Cyberpunk, obviously. Uh, the Destiny 2 expansion, although it's coming to f- um, Xbox for free, I've already bought the... Um, expansion and my full pass for the the whole year on pc but because of cross play that'll carry over to xbox anyway so i can pretty much play destiny anywhere wherever i want anytime which for me is a big deal <laughs> um and godfall uh you probably why wouldn't i get that on playstation 5 it's a launch title um for the exact same reasons i mentioned about cyberpunk um they've not shown anything re frame rates etc and of course if someone like you chunt wants to get into that when you've seen the reviews and stuff like no this does look sick i'd rather have someone to play it with um and hopefully when it goes cross-platform the first things to do that will probably be pc and xbox um and then onto the switch um hyrule warriors that new um one set in the breath of the wild um timeline Mm. i'm keen for that and they're releasing a, a another like fit boxing game thing. I quite like these things. Like the, I obviously mentioned the ring fit earlier. Um, and you know, back in the Oculus playing days, like all I did was play like boxing games and table tennis games, like something that physically makes me move, especially during times where we're uh, confined. Um, so I'll, I'll grab that. But there's there's a few things in that have been added to my list. Um, Call of Duty wasn't on in it, and 
um, Phoenix Rising wasn't on it when it was known as Gods and Demons or whatever the hell they called it. Gods and Monsters. Gods and Monsters, that's the one. Um, so yeah, they've both gone in. You did remind me about Tony Hawk as well, but again, I think I think Black Friday sales this year could be pretty good. You know, anything that kind of has come out in the last three months, four months, um, might well, you know, even on PlayStation, then something like Ghost of Tsushima might get a, oh, you can play it on your PlayStation 5 and it's got 30, 30 bucks off it. Do you know what I mean? Like, that'd be pretty enticing. I think there's going to be some serious deals come November the whatever. Black what day Friday is it? I'm and... never across that Black Friday. Like, what, what day is it? I think it, it's around the twentieth. So, oh wow. Okay. So no, actually, it might be the week after because when they the were last, speculating, it's the last Friday that, in November, that... isn't it? Usually. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm never across it because it's always like an, a more of an American thing, but it's now becoming something over here as well. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely have to keep an eye out that, on that for a lot of cheap games. And just keep adding to Friday, the, the ever growing backlog. Mark your calendars. Friday 27th. Ah, oh, awesome. Cool. Make sure you've got some pennies yeah, so stored up. Just buy more games we'll never play, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just, you can never get, never get to them. Cool. Oh, well, I think we're pretty much done there. We're almost wrapping up on the on the hour. So we'll start um, ending it here. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate the chat. Um, it's always a bit, bit of fun to have a bit of a less serious and fluffy one every now and then uh lots of things to look forward to lots of acquisitions to potentially have <laughs> more exciting games um i'm uncle chance you can find me everywhere that you just type it in uh pornhub maybe you can find it there too i have an account um dan <laughs> you're you're um getting used to your twitter stuff i see you a lot more on twitter now and um, Crying. so yeah. hard to wake up in the morning and look at it Oh, it's, yeah, it's all, all about it. I, I used to hate Twitter, but I, I'm kind of infatuated with it now. Um, and you've got a new podcast as well that you want to throw out there? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so I started a podcast with um, one of my mates down here who lives on the other side of the city, and I can't leave, see him because it's, he's outside of 5K. Uh, but, yeah, so it's the uh, Money Shot podcast where we talk about uh, sports, mostly AFL and NBA, but some other stuff and yeah we're pretty happy with that money shot name yeah. <laughs> I love, love the name anybody man. would be forgiven Sorry, for uh, thinking that was a podcast about where to blab yeah. <laughs> 100% Sorry, uh, Jamie and uh, you're going to keep making some uh, highly viral tweets uh, you know about rumours and speculations on online which is pretty fun to see just, just uh, by magic mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, your your magic, and uh, yeah, like I said, I'm Michael Chan, and you'll find me anywhere. Um, until next week, we've got episode 30 coming up next week, so maybe something big will happen between now and then. Who knows? Until then, um, to the lose, do everything, all the nice things. Bye, and continue to wash your hands. Oh my god, constantly. Chance still Someone's waking. gonna have a-